So I wanted to wait a day, you know, kind of let my feelings settle, sleep on what happened, you know, before doing this video, right? I, I wanted to sleep a night on this and, 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 and just let the feelings settle down and calm down so that I don't say something stupid or, or, or upset too many people, okay? But above all, I wanted this kind of like monologue to be a, to be constructive, to be a constructive account so that something good can come out of this. Okay, so here's what happened, right? Yesterday, I went to open a savings account in a bank near my house so that I can see my housing load online, okay? Which meant I had to get in my car, I had to drive to the branch, I had to park the car, scan my forehead for COVID, um, scan my phone for contact tracing, and then get to the branch. I, I got there on time by 9.15 in the morning because I wanted to be in and out of there because it's, it's a busy day, right? And, and then basically, it's, it's only a savings account opening. But it didn't open until 9.25. And then the branch officer said to me, here, here's a bunch of forms. There's, there's about like six or seven forms, right? To fill in, right? But the boxes were so small that you can't nearly write inside. Then they wanted to see proof of my mobile number, which meant digging around my phone for my online phone bill, which is, of course, it turned out to be password protected. And God only, know, God only knows what my password was. I, I had to dig around and finally I got it, right? And then in the forms, they wanted to know my income. They wanted to know my race. They wanted to know my wife's name and so on and so forth. So then I asked the branch officer, right? Why do you want to know my race? Does being Chinese bestow a different treatment on me? If I'm green and four foot tall and I've got purple hair, does that give me um, different levels of treatment or service, right? So then I found out they wanted to charge me 15 bucks a year to use their debit card, okay? It's a plastic debit card. And uh, meanwhile, on the door to the branch, I, I noticed that they had these advertisements where they're trying to save the world. And they're trying to save the world and the sea creatures from um, plastics pollution, right? But that's not all. Then I had to wait another 40 minutes before the card was issued, before going back to the branch officer again to log in online, to, to, to log in to the, to the website, right? And, and on, online, there's another bunch of forms to fill in. They wanted to know my, my secret word. They wanted to know my, my, you know, whatever, you know, my mom's maiden name. They wanted to know the school I went to. It's kind of like for security, lah, you know. Um, but, but guess what? The website was not optimized for mobile. It was optimized for desktop. Which, which means if your eyesight is poor, or if you suffer from fat fingers, or your phone is small, cheap, and shitty, like mine, um, then the whole process becomes as enjoyable as a visit to the dentist. Which made me think to myself, the world is trying to be more digitally savvy. The central bank wants banks to move away from the old world where there's paper and checkbooks and um, visits to the branch. They want to move to a digital world. But this experience, literally like 24 hours ago, made me think that ambitions are one thing, and reality is a very different one, right? So all in all, the whole process took well over two hours to open a savings account, okay? So what I'm trying to say is this. The banks, as we know it, as an institution, some of them are a few hundred years old. They've become too slow, too, too big, too expensive. I mean, how can you, in your right mind, justify charging a customer 15 ringgit a year for a debit card which provides no service to you other than to basically provide access to an online savings account. But I didn't even want a savings account. I wanted to have access to my mortgage account. So I don't need a savings account to see my mortgage account. Why did the banks make it compulsory for you to do that? I don't understand. I asked the girl. She said she doesn't know. She's only doing a job. Um, and, you know, this, this girl was fantastic. She's a really nice girl. Um, she's been working there 10 years. She, she, she pushes paper, of course. And so all, all the counter people, the very friendly, very cooperative, very nice people. But they were going through the process because of the bank's regulations and laws, and ostensibly also the regulators' banks and laws, right? Um, I don't think they, they really think it through, what the process is. Um, I don't think they've got any autonomy over whether the process can be faster, cheaper, more efficient, etc. This is something for the higher-ups to understand. 
But the higher ups are making the money, the higher ups are making the fat profits, the higher ups are ones getting the most from the dividends, and the higher ups are, are quite happy with the status quo, right? But what it means also is this, that anytime you've got inefficiency in the system, anytime you've got some loophole or some way of doing things faster, cheaper, better, quicker than, than you, that, that means you're, you're ripe for um, disruption. And you, if you ask any industry that's been disrupted by innovation or the internet in the last 20 years, you'll know how fast and how savage um, that change can be. Sooner or later, the fintech guys are going to come and eat your lunch. Uh, I'm not going to say which bank it was, obviously, because there's only like literally six or seven in this country. But I'm willing to wager that in many parts of the world, too many parts of the world, the same process is, as, is, is the reality. Um, um, too slow, too bureaucratic, too inefficient, too expensive. And, you know, the banks are trying to be too many things to too many people. This the whole universal banking model. The fintech model is one which is based on verticals. One specific industry or one specific service done really, really well. Really, really well, right? Banks are trying to be everything to too many people, everything to everybody. I think that model might fail. It might not stick around for the long term. So what are the consequences of this, right? Because the extinction of a business or industry never makes for a pretty sight. But in the meantime, a lot of people, retirees, pension funds, normal people, normal Joes, you and me, um, rely on the banks for a good portion of their dividend income, their dividend income, their, their retirement income. Without that money that comes in year in, year out, um, a lot of livelihoods um, might suffer. And the hundreds and, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people that are employed by the banking industry um, are also potentially at risk. So any change, that there's any threat to this world of consequences. So change is never easy, um, least of all if you're big, unwieldy, slow, inefficient. Uh, but it's got to happen sooner or later. Do you think it might? Will the banks change? Who's going to change the fastest? Um, you tell me what you think in the comments below. Um, yeah, interesting conversation and uh, interesting state of uh, developments in the world today. If you like this video, if you'd like to see more of these kinds of um, monologues, tell me what you think below and do try and subscribe to this channel and give me a like if you can. Thanks for coming by. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.